Six years ago, we met Georgia Rankin. Georgia has a condition called skeletal dysplasia, which means that at 16 years old, she was just two feet and seven inches. But Georgia is a pretty incredible young woman, and now at 21 years old, she has 700,000 YouTube followers and an exciting career <laughs> ahead of her. Wow, oh, George well with us. Uh, no, that was good. I love Welcome. that. It was good. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, Great to see 700, you. 700,000 followers on uh, on Instagram <laughs> uh, is is no mean feat. And I like to think that we might have had something of a hand in this. Definitely. So how? Oh, so from the first time I went on the show to fundraise my wheelchair, that was just the start of everything. And having that wheelchair has given me so much independence now to yeah. literally live this life I'm living. And then it's also given me the confidence as well because back then I didn't do YouTube the first time I went on and then ever since ever since I got given the little pack of makeup yep. that was like everything to me that was amazing I was like wow and then I took that home and then I did a little video now I don't think it's on the channel I I'm on now, but it was on like another channel, yeah. and it is somewhere on there. But it was like, yeah, start of my. That YouTube was the beginning. Really. So, so it was yeah. a build up of Massive, confidence. Massive, yeah, yeah. Confidence. Really big boost. So after you you came on here, you then did the documentaries, yes. Thirty Inches and Turning Eighteen, and yeah. you did your makeup qualification. Yes. So that was kind of the beginning of turning something that you loved and yeah. something you were interested in into something more professional as, as a career. Yeah, definitely. And it just, it gave me, because I never had any like experience in makeup. It was just, I played with it at home. I didn't yeah. do anything else. And then doing that course, again, gave me the confidence boost around other people, like doing other one, everyone else's makeup. And then when I did it on YouTube, it also gave me that, you know, a little bit more professional yeah. side of it. Like, this is how you do it. it. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, Real you life's not, changed. <laughs> not, only, not only that, I mean, talk about confidence. You, you Did you... Do just do your first photo shoot? Yeah, my first, like, that was a massive deal for me. I've never done a photo shoot before, ever. So it, it's just like, wow, to do that is Yeah, but massive. not just, talk about lay yourself bare. I mean, not just any old photo shoot. <laughs> underwear. It's underwear. I know, it's like, you've really, really put me in the deep end here. Like, it was mad, because I had no idea that my first, you know, Really chill shoot. I was thinking of being fully clothed. I was like, that's that's scary enough. That yeah, is scary. Like, no, you're However, gonna be on. scary. By the end of it, you said you felt totally empowered. No, I did. I, oh, it it did something to me. I was like, oh, I'm not bothered now. So I think any photo shoot now is like, that's fine. Yeah. Well, anything. <laughs> Whether or not, what do yeah, you want? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> what good bothered. about you as well is you've got this new platform now. And lots yeah. of people are watching you and interested yeah. in what you're doing. But you're using this new fame to campaign for diversity yes. in the fashion industry, and you want to get more people talking about. Yeah, of course. How is that going? Are you achieving what you've set out it's to do? It's just... It, I've started doing it, like, I've gradually done it over, like, just naturally in YouTube videos where I've not done, like, a whole video like, you need to be diverse, but I've noticed it with me starting YouTube that it doesn't matter about your followers. It does seem to me like it's your appearance and you really... Right. Like, it's quite hard to see, you know, a good, diverse mix of people in campaigns. Mm. You it's just like really rare. So when I was doing YouTube, I was like, oh, it might be my followers. And then it got to a point where I was like, oh, no, it's really not because everyone else who was similar like level to me yeah. was going on these like big campaigns or just events and I wasn't in being invited. Mm. And I'd get sent the products, but I don't get the invited. invitation. So has, that, has yeah. that changed? Um, not yet. I'm still trying to push it. So and let's just talk say, about let's, it. Let's but... just clarify that then. So you get you get sent all the products yeah, which I get you can products. use on your channel. Yeah, so like I promote it on my yeah. Instagram and channel, yeah. Um but the other models who may be doing a similar thing get yeah. invited to yeah. big S events. Yeah. Same and things. you don't? No. Never. So it's a bit half-hearted. Yeah. It's a bit, it's like, a bit like sort ooh. of a token. Oh no, yeah, we're we're yeah. being diverse. But actually, when it comes down to it, it's really whereas it's you, not. If, if if it was me, you'd be the one person yeah. I'd want there. Oh, I mean, I'd <laughs> representing everything yeah. that you represent. Yeah. It's it's hard because I say as well, like it scares me to know what the generations beneath me, like my little brother, his generation are going to grow up on social media. Mm. It's everywhere, and they're not seeing like realistic people as well. Yes. Yeah. And like, I want to go on Instagram, relate to people. People, but I don't, and it also can affect how you feel, and yeah. it's really sad. Well, this doesn't. This positivity. You are an incredibly positive person. Thank it you. rubs off on all <laughs> yeah. of us, which Thank is why we you. love having you here. But all of that comes at a price because you can have this fantastic, um, you know, sort of face on the world. Yeah. But it hurts. Oh yeah. 
Oh, uh, and you are constantly in sort of pain therapy. Yeah. You're such a positive person. At first, they didn't yeah. believe you were in pain. I know. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> and that then that's the thing. so that so you use morphine. Yes. And with that, they come they become side effects. You yeah. are very worried about using morphine long oh, term. Yeah. Um, and so that's where you've started to campaign for cannabis oil. Yes. And so tell me about so your involvement in that. So when I um, when we were doing the documentary, we got uh, we was able to go to Denver and over there, obviously it's massive over there with uh, like medical marijuana. It's, you know, it, it's not even looked at over there. And when we went over, they invited me to go to the factory. I was 18 at the time, so I was just about like able to go into the factory, but I wasn't able to go in and see it and like almost see it made. And I met um, another boy over there who was called Colton, who was in a different, he's in, chronic pain but it was totally different he had than me. Disease. yes that's it so he was taking um, like the little tablet with oil and he was saying like that you know helped him so much because he was on the same morphine that you're same, on as the exactly same drug the same, and he was yeah. able to with obviously guidance yeah. from medical professionals he was able to stop taking that and yeah. just take this cannabis so there wasn't yeah. any long-term effects no. like you're worrying about with the morphine. That's it, yeah. However, this isn't something you can experiment with no. because currently here, you'd, it's, illegal. it's illegal. Yeah, it's such a shame. And the things that is available at the minute, I can't even take it because it's not, it's not strong enough. It's got, got the THC, which is illegal. And yeah. we only need the tiny bit just to give it the boost, I think. But obviously, it's... Yes, you can't well, get hold of once it. Once again, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're uh, you're leading another fight there yeah, with yes, this one. The Department yeah. of Health and Social Care spokesperson said, we've changed the law to allow more people to access cannabis-based medicines where appropriate. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, that's nice, have yeah. concluded that there is insufficient evidence to recommend unlicensed treatments for chronic pain. We continue to work hard to improve the evidence base for cannabis-based medicines. Well, you and keep once fighting, again, definitely. using that voice. Once again, yeah, let's, move forward, let's yeah. move forward. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Will you, will you come back and see us again? Yes, please. Of course. Good. <laughs> Good. I'd love to. Thank you. Love Thank to you so you. much. Thank you.